All right, well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our special city council meeting today. Our main focus is gonna to be to um, go over the information on how to choose a new uh, city manager. But before we begin, if you please join me in the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so today is uh, Tuesday, June 23rd, approximately 9 a.m. And I believe uh, Barbara DeLeon is gonna lead off the uh, information. Um, oh, I got one back there, thanks. Mayor, oh. Doug, this is Barbara DeLeon and I'd like to introduce Catherine Tuck Parrish from the Novak Consulting Group. And she is the consultant that you all have engaged to assist in this recruitment process and I'm going to turn it over to Catherine so that she can give us an overview of the recruitment process and lead us in the discussion for finalizing interview logistics. Okay. Mayor, we can't hear her. Yeah, that's true. I, I don't know if she started yet. Thought it was just me. She, she did. Just one second. I'll walk in there and see if I can assist. Okay. Now I believe she is rejoining. Go yes. try to stop and then rejoin. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Mm -hmm. Barbara, if she needs to use my Surface Pro, I'll take it into her. Um, actually, yes, I thought she could walk right into my office and we'll. And she's joining. No, no, still can't. Okay, Mayor Council, this is Barbara Delion, and I'll just have Catherine um, come into my office and, and use my login. Okay, well, while you're doing that, Barbara, I just want to uh, go over the conflict of interest statement. This is where I ask if any member of the city manager, city staff, or city council has any known conflict. She can use my. On yeah. Any item on the agenda. We can. You can use mine. Oh. None, Mayor. Thank you. None. Yeah. Okay. None. None. Okay. Good. Thank you so much. I'll sit in here. Of course. All right, hopefully this is working now. All right, thank you. Um, it's a pleasure to be with you um, virtually now and I look forward to being with you in person in your closed session later. What I wanted to do briefly is walk through where we are in the process. Um, we re-advertised the position as you know and in the second round of recruitment, we had a total of 63 applicants. Of those, we collect self-reported information and um, 
They averaged 16 years of local government experience in their self-reported um, information um, and the uh, voluntary information about the candidates who self-identified their race or ethnicity included 58% that identified as white or Caucasian, 12.7% that uh, identified as Black or African American, 16.4% who identified as Hispanic or Latino, 1.8% who identified as Asian, Hawaiian, or other um, Pacific Islander, 1.8% that identified as American Indian or Alaska Native, 1.8% who identified as two or more races, and 7.3% that um, did not uh, specify how they identified. Um, we, to get to this list, then what we do is we use um, the information that folks have submitted. We review the two people review every resume and we first assess them based on the minimum qualifications and then a further um, assessment based on both the preferred qualifications and also looking at sort of the comparability of their experience based on what you identified you were looking for. So we narrowed the pool down and you all um, ha will be discussing the top candidates in your closed session. And I'd be happy to answer questions about that at that time. Um, but I did want to just let you know sort of how we got here. There are some factors that are more difficult to write down. For example, if they have had a number of very short tenures and you have a strong applicant pool that might make them lower in the rating than those that had um, more seemingly more stable um, tenures. Um, and also just sort of the comparability of the communities, um, unless the type of experience they had. So it is both um, an art and a science and we try to mix those and ultimately this person will work for you all and it is your decision on who to select. And so we try to bring you a range of folks so that you feel like you have good choices and can make that decision. Um, I wanna pause there and see if there are questions before I start talking about kind of the, the logistics. I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am, what was your name again? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm Catherine Tuck Parish with the Novak yes. Consulting Group okay. that is now part of RefTelus. Okay, great. Okay, well, I appreciate that. Um, I think, uh, you know, we've, we've been through this a few times, but uh, I, I, if you want to just continue with your presentation and then so we can get to looking at the candidates, that would be great. Fantastic. So um, I wanted to just double check with you that you would like to proceed in the following manner for the interviews. Those would include an interview with you all as a group, as a body. Um, it would also include a staff panel. And um, it would also include a community panel. And I believe you all had had discussions about who were on those panels and we can talk about logistics of that later. But I just wanna confirm that you would like those elements in addition um, we would have a video element that candidates would um, submit in advance that you would review as part of the interview process. So, um, and then um, if, depending on what restrictions are in place and what makes sense, we could add a, a physical tour of the city um, in a car and that might not make sense right now, <laughs> but maybe it will make sense later. So that is just an additional element that you might or might not want to consider. Um, and then I believe you also plan to have a community reception um, one of the evenings. So those would be the elements. Um, I'm getting, uh, Adrian, I'm getting a word that that some members of the public are having it hard to hear the um, presentation. I don't know if it's, uh, I can hear Catherine fine, but I don't know if it's just part of the others that aren't, aren't able to hear what's going on, members of the public that is so. So let me just ask you some questions, Catherine. Um, 
Yes, sir. Were, were you were oh, you expecting? Oh. Sorry, Mayor. Yes, Adrian. Oh, sorry, I didn't I realize. Um, yeah, I'm working on the audio issue. It's really low, so we're we're working on that. But we'll hopefully, get that up fixed soon. Okay. Thank you. So, okay, thank you. So, Catherine, um, were you thinking all these candidates, or this is? I guess this is what I was envisioning is that when we go into closed session, we'll, we'll, we'll maybe emerge with four or five, maybe not even that many candidates to bring back to, to request these uh, videos of, or were you wanting videos of all these, these applicants? Mayor, your, the statement that you made first, yes, I would envision that you all would select from among this group and narrow the pool down. Okay. Okay, so let's just say we narrow, narrow it down to three or four people then um, get the videos and, and such. And then um, hypothetically, if we were to, uh, you know, one gets it hands down, but let's just say it's, it's a toss up between two people. Then I think it would be, it would be better to, to, to have what, you know, you were talking about the staff, the, the public, I, and this was going to be done through zoom, correct? Or uh, I, I would really, I don't know. I'm a little hesitant to have it in a open forum like that. I mean, we can we can uh, have people participate and, and watch. But um, were you expecting to have it in a in an actual meeting type of forum? The my expectation would be that the interviews that the council held would be in closed session, and that the community and that the other panels would also be closed. Um, and that the community interaction would be both as members of the stakeholder panel. And so there would be represented representatives, just as you all obviously represent the community, and that the there would be a uh, forum, um, an opportunity for anyone to attend a public session, like a informal reception, I would sort of call it so that individual members of the public have a chance to talk to either your top finalists or you know it could be done on the first evening or the second evening um, so that would be the public component of it well let me ask uh, my colleagues to see if they're comfortable having a, a meeting like that or if it can be done through zoom let me let them chime in on that because uh um, you know, I, you see our neighbors on, in Arizona and Texas, uh, in the increases in COVID-19, you know, we're, we've been pretty fortunate here. Things are holding steady. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's, you, you know, now if we include all these member communities uh, to chime in and we can, we can enlarge it. If we know that a particular group, let's say, uh, you know, one particular group A, and we know that there's going to be 10 people, well, we don't, we, you know, as long as we have their names and, 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 and let them into the into the process. That's fine. It's just the it's just that when we have when we have it uncontrolled, we don't know who's on there. That's that's the story. So let me just uh, let me just ask my colleagues what what they're thinking about uh, whether to have uh, the, the the presentations um, in person. Now, granted, when we have let's say we get down to two or three people, um, I can go either way. Um, you know, I, I, of course, I would prefer to meet them in person, but, you know, thinking about their safety as well, you know, they got to fly in most, most likely. I, I mean, I don't know, but you never know, unless, of course, it's a local candidate, you know what I'm saying, or can drive. But assuming that they would have to fly in, I don't know, you know, I, I, I think we could still conduct the interviews um, in, in uh, like that. And then now if we if we really need if we find someone that we want, and we want to offer them a the job, then yeah, I guess they could fly in for that, and then meet with us. So let me just uh, let me just go around uh, the the. Let's see who uh, if anyone has any comments on this. So Mayor Pro Tem, Gandara, and then uh, quite a few. Council Bencomo, Vasquez, Beta Stuvi. Mayor Pro Tem, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Miss um, Tuck Parish, for your presentation and your work on this. We're excited um, to move forward. Um, 
thank you for um, also for um, reiterating our process and what we've agreed on. So yes, I, I want to continue with the individual, um, the staff and the community um, participation. I think that's extremely important as inclusive as we can be with our community, the better. Um, I know COVID puts a wrench on a lot of things and things that we're not used to doing, right? Like who has, I mean, in my past administrative life, right? I, I there were times when I interviewed folks in um, by phone and that has proven difficult because I'm a very visual person. Um, and so, but I do not want to put people in any danger um, um, whatsoever. And, and I'm feeling a little anxious about them flying in. Um, for for this. Um, and so I think um, if we as, as much as we can do these interviews via Zoom um, would be helpful if we get down to the one or two candidates, maybe there's um, more of a, of a need than to um, see this person, um, this person be able to then do a tour right around Las Cruces to really understand um, Las Cruces, you know, what it looks like, if you will. Um, again, it's unfortunate um, because I'd love to do all of this um, in person, um, but I understand um, instinctively there is fear about about the travel, the restrictions, COVID, and I, I don't want to add to add to that. So um, again, I'm, I'm open to more of a Zoom. I think the reason we asked for those videos was to get a better understanding, you know, of what they represent and um, how they represent, it, you know, what their oral skills are, look like, and we pose several questions and such. And so it gives us um, sort of an idea of, of, of uh, you know, their character personality, that, that kind of thing, how they would present to community, if you will. So um, those are my... Um, immediate um, reactions, Mary, Mayor. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Councilor Bencomo? Councilor Bencomo? Yes, thank you. Sorry, I clicked on the wrong button and then minimized my computer. Anyway, um, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Catherine. It's nice to meet you. I'm excited to um, do this second round with you. Um, you know, I was I think that there's, I'm sensing that there's a lot of frustration from the public um, in terms of just how long it's been since we've been able to do good public input, you know, instead of just emails at the beginning of meetings. Um, so I really, I, I mean, I, so a couple things. I think we should not choose for the candidate. If there's one candidate that feels unsafe traveling, then I think that means all of them should be through Zoom, right? We can't just do some in person and some not. But if we, I think, do a, you know, put that out there, do you feel comfortable traveling here um, for in-person interviews? If it's one, two candidates, maybe even top three, whatever that looks like um, for that process. Um, I mean, I think, you know, the panels um, maybe had 10 to 15 people. I think there's definitely a way that we can do a safe, socially distant, um, perhaps we can find a large space for that. Um, and then, you know, for the bigger community, that one makes me a lot more nervous, the bigger community reception. I think um, that feels a lot more um, risky to me. And I would hate to put not only the candidate in that situation, but our community. I do wonder if we can try to do some sort of Zoom webinar uh, where we can have members of the public register in advance to be part of whatever that looks like a presentation and allow um, and allow some sort of public input through um, not even necessarily video, but perhaps the phone version of the webinar um, or just audio, but no video. Um, I, I, I just think we should really try to push the limit on what Zoom can allow us to do in terms of how we can start including the community at, at large. Um, but I, you know, I do feel like, um, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm torn because I think Doñana County numbers continue, we continue to see double digits for Doñana County. Um, and I just feel like given that the first time, the first round we did this had like, we just, it was just the shutdown, like, we were super new at all of this. Like it was, I mean, by now we're used to it, right? But, um, which I think feels a little better, but I think 
um, nothing beats really an in-person meeting, right, for such an important job. So I don't know if that clarifies anything, but I think um, at least I really want us to try to push the limits of Zoom and what that can allow us to do in terms of, you know, getting, being able to allow the public to, to participate. I'll put you down as open and if we can, um, if, if we, if it can be utilized in person, we'll go so, we'll do so. And like I said, I think, I think um, that choice, we should leave it to them. Like, are you willing to travel here? We are okay with either. Mm -hmm. But if, let's say we pick top three people and one of them says, you know, I feel really unsafe, then we move to Zoom, right? Because I think okay. all of them, right? So. Okay, okay. Uh, Councilor Vasquez. Thank Thanks. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, pleasure to meet you, Catherine. And uh, I will concur, um, I think, with um, with both of my colleagues. I think having an in-person meeting for the finalists with the city council, um, if the candidates are agreeable to it and we can uh, safely distance ourselves, uh, wear masks, all the things that we need to do um, uh, would be good, right? If we had two or three finalists, um, I think in-person demeanor tells, tells a lot. Body language tells a lot, I think, about a person. Um, and so that would be something that I would consider if that was something the candidate was agreeable to, um, but also not a deal breaker for me in terms of if we have to do a Zoom meeting, that's perfectly fine as well. Um, and, and agree with Councilor Bencomo's idea about community meetings hosted via Zoom. Um, I think we can actually put together some really good stakeholder groups in our community that can participate via Zoom in a series of meetings um, that you know, where, where they can perhaps prepare questions ahead of time or submit questions in real time uh, with the candidates uh, via Zoom in a way that is, um, uh, you know, hopefully beneficial to, to the community members in, in terms of being able to interact with those candidates. Um, so, so yeah, I think a, a combination of both, um, really reserving that in-person um, uh, opportunity to the finalists um, only with council and in a safe environment um, otherwise, uh, Zoom would also be okay with me. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Councillor Beta Stubi. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Ms. Tuck Parrish, for your presentation. Um, I'm inclined to agree with my fellow councillors. I do want to check just to make sure that um, what the state mandate is for out of town travelers. I know that we have had restrictions on quarantine. Um, and so I think that's something that we do need to look at if we are going to proceed um, with inviting people over because if they have to wait for a week or two, then I think that kind of changes up um, our what we need to do. Um, I do like the idea of having um, the community stakeholder zoom uh, webinars. Um, the only other option that I was going to say if we ended up doing any sort of in person type meeting. If it's something where we're going to have larger groups, if we could find a place to do it outside, even if we held it at the plaza um, area to to kind of just give it a different environment and a, a little bit of a safer environment. But I'm inclined to go with the Zoom options, and I think we just need to check on those state regulations for out-of-state travelers. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks. I forgot about the quarantine, you know, um, when they travel from an out-of-town or you know, like if they go back home, they may have to sit out for two weeks. I forgot about that. Uh, Councillor Sorg and then Councillor Fotis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and, and uh, welcome, Catherine, uh, to Las Cruces. Um, here's what I would like to see us do. I would like to see us have a two or three question uh, video answers from all nine, all nine of these candidates, uh, that we could uh, just observe them and pick from there anywhere from five to eight of those four interviews by Zoom or video, um, remote video. Um, then uh, pick from them maybe two or three, and these numbers can change depending on what kind of answers we get. Pick from them two or three that we would like to have an in-person um, interview, a second interview. Um, and I would suggest that, I don't think they would object, to just before they come here to be tested for the coronavirus. And um, that way we'd know if they're okay. Um, and, you know, of course, you can always pick it up on the airplane coming here. That's true. 
but at least that would uh, 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 give some kind of uh, indication. So um, that's what I would like to have. And then in, as far as the what we do and the in-person um, interviews, uh, we can decide that at a later date, depending on how things look. Um, but, you know, something with the public is fine. I'm, whether it be virtual or, or not, it doesn't uh, matter, whatever's safest. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Flores? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Ms. Um, Tuck Parrish, for your uh, presentation. Thank you for being here, and uh, thank you for feeling safe in our city, safe enough to be in Ms. DeLeon's office. Um, I appreciate your work. I, um, I'm of the same opinion of uh, my colleagues. I concur with each one of them. I, I have to share that, uh, frankly, the um, candidates last time around, uh, it was probably not entirely their fault that they didn't get hired because the environment of the, we did the Zoom or whatever it was, I think whatever it was, uh, it was a virtual interview. And I'm very similar to um, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Gandara where I really have to see the person and, and there's something lost in, in, in that transmission, in that virtual transmission. So I, I would uh, really, I, I think that um, um, Councilor Abeta Stubi has an excellent idea to have it outdoors. I mean, we had um, that big, uh, what was it? I can't, uh, so we've had so many things going on, but there was that event on the plaza um, about uh, Saturday, a week ago Saturday, where Austin, no doubt, Trout, Trout was there and DJ Black. And so um, if we can do something like that to have people come together, I think that we can have an outdoor type thing. I, I think it's of utmost importance to have our community participate um, and to, um, to really see um, what we go through in hiring the leadership. I mean, it is really a um, city manager run city. Yeah. I mean, we have the, we have our duties under the charter, but it is the employee that continues after the counselors come and go. So um, if there's any way that um, where we're working with um, uh, safe uh, practices to have, uh, have these um, interviews in person, I, I prefer it over anything else. Um, I know my, my niece traveled to uh, Virginia with her two sons, uh, both high school kids. And, well, actually one just graduated. Um, and um, she said that they didn't have any problems whatsoever. But of course that was about two months. And um, things are spiking up, unfortunately. So thank you so much. If you could just keep that in mind, I, I'd appreciate it. And again, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Council, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, did you have another comment? Did you forget to put your hand up. I do have another comment. I don't want to belabor this, but I, I think my colleagues have excellent points. I just want to remind folks, um, as you know, my partner Senator Souls went up for the special session and even just traveling within New Mexico, I have quarantined them. We are not, we are not, um, I'm not seeing him. I'm not, you know, we are, we, I, I want people to know, um, and unfortunately this has become very political, but frankly, people have mass fatigue. Um, the other party was not, a lot of them not wearing, they weren't adhering to social distancing practices. Um, and so I, I, I just want you to know how um, we are putting this individual in an, a, a predicament that after he or she comes here and does an interview and goes home, they are left to have to deal with the expense of quarantining themselves from their family, from their position at, at work. Um, and so I, I just can't, um, I think we have done so well in the response to COVID and we have really used science to move through this process. And so I think with these types of 
um, even with this, it, it, this is just the nature of where we are at currently for probably another year or so. So we really have to make do with what we have and use technology to the best of our ability to assist people through this process. Now, I have to tell you, I have interviewed for big positions. I have moved, come hell or high water, I was there in spite of whatever situation. And to say like, oh, you know, no judgment here if you come or not. I do not want to place people in that position. I just don't because people will do it if they really want this job. And I, I please understand that there are a lot of folks that are, that have fear and anxiousness and ang about this. And so to put them in a position um, to have to um, decide for not only themselves, their family, and their community that they have to go back to is is not what I think we stand for as the city of Las Cruces. So, I I, I just wanted to say that last point. Thank no, you. I, I I got you, Mayor Potem, and I, I I'll get it figured out. I I get what you're saying, and and I agree with what you're saying. Um, but so. Um, and and maybe we need to do more smaller. But, oh, no, what I, excuse me. What right, I was going to say is, to me what I was going to say was, is we're going to have to do it all the same. So if we go with Zoom, everyone gets Zoom. If we go in person, everyone gets in person. Um, but we'll we'll discuss that, um, you know, in, in closed session here. With we'll see who we got. You know, we'll see. We could end up with, with, with all all you know nine or ten or or, or one or none. You never know. But I'll, I'll go true. from there. I'm just trying to get a general idea of where you're all are coming from, and I think I've got it. Uh, Councilor Abeta Stuvi, you got a, another question or did you forget to put your hand down? No, um, I was just going to uh, comment on Councilor Sorg. Um, our testing still for um, someone to come in would be for negatives. It's running, you know, the three to five days for a positive. They're hoping for it within 24 hours. So it would still cause a bit of delay, even if we did ask for them. So I, I do think moving towards the Zoom platforms probably is the way to go. Thank you. Oh, I, that's what I said. We're going to do Zoom. Not only the only the final one or two people would be uh, coming here. So we're only talking about one, two at the most three. All the others would be Zoom. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's probably the direction I'm thinking. So I appreciate that, Councillor Sword. Uh, let me get back to Catherine. Catherine, is there something else you need to share with us before we uh, go into closed session? I don't believe so. I appreciated hearing your conversation and I look forward to joining you in executive session at the time that's appropriate. Okay, well, if there's nothing further, then I'll entertain a motion to go into closed session to discuss uh, uh, the city manager candidates. So moved. That was a motion made by Robert. Councillor Flores, second by Councillor Incomo. Incomo. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, Aye. the records reflect no one is in opposition. We are in closed session at 9.35 a.m. Safe okay. travels.